Hey guys, so this is part two of the Furry Man Saga. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you at the end of the video. So before we continue the proper story, I feel I should explain my character's background a wee bit more, as it became the focus for the next ten or so sessions, until the DM decided that he didn't want to be bothered by it being relevant anymore and we never heard about it again. That's quite a good thing. Yeah. If I'll be honest with you, I, I think that's honestly the best thing you could have done. <laughs> yeah. My character used to be an initiate of a knightly order. He was in charge of guarding what was effectively a Pandora's box, housing both thousands of evil spirits and the order's patron spirit, all of which I released on accident. <laughs> Originally, he was tricked by an evil spirit to open it, but then the DM decided to randomly retcon that my character was so drunk and stupid that he went and opened the box, which he was specifically tasked to prevent people from opening it. Oh, why? He did that because the boy had a drink once. And oh, thought, yeah, and he I was mean, drunk. It, that's he, his character. He thought it was really funny. It's like, you know what? That's going to be like the most that's your typical, thing. That's a that's your typical <laughs> point of, of your character. character. You're so drunk. You can deal with it, right? <laughs> Because, haha, I have decided your character is an alcoholic now because of one check in session one. <laughs> Seriously, okay. is there any chance? So my character's goal was to recapture all of the spirits and put them back in the box where they belong. All the while, with the help of the patron spirit, who hated me forever. Not because I released the evil spirits and doomed potentially all of existence to death, but because I was a drunkard even though that was entirely the result of the DM retconning everything about my character several sessions into the game because he thought it would be funny. <laughs> Fuck me. Like, it's moments like this where I ask, why are you still playing? But then again, I remember, oh wait, but we wouldn't get this beautiful story. Story, yes. <laughs> so, you know, like, your pain is satisfied. As my or, enjoyment. Or, you know, so, like, no way I'd be like, like, why did you not just stand up and just get out of there? Like, I know. that other guy did it? Yeah. In the other video we were doing? Yeah. So we began our quest to seal these spirits before they destroyed the world, as my spirit tells me the location where we must go, and we pay a teleport to get there. We find ourselves in another cave with skeletons in it. I would like to point out at this point that we were around level 5, and thus far the most things that we had been fighting have been skeletons and wolves, so we easily go through the dungeon and discover our strongest foe yet. A skeleton mage. <laughs> Ooh, I need, I need, dun dun dun, you know. <laughs> so we do epic combat, and by epic combat, I mean I tried to cast fireball. It gets counterspelled, and the barbarian smacks it, and it was dead in one round. But then we met the real final boss of the dungeon. A ghost, which is the spirit we were looking for. And, um, yeah. Big evil spirit that threatened the very fabric of existence. Dead in two turns. It only took that long, because to finish it off, we needed to get the last hit with a special soul-capturing rock. After capturing the spirit, we wanted to go back, only to find that the portal was closed. We would later find out that we were supposed to buy a return stone that would allow us to go back from anywhere to Portal City. You think we would explain that? I know. That's like... I'm really important that they Fuck me. No, you're just stuck out there. Ha <laughs> <laughs> LOL! <laughs> We were, of course, only informed of its existence after we had already left by the DM, so now we needed to figure out how to get back. As we discussed our plans on how to get back, we're suddenly interrupted by the DM player character. Oh, oh God, here him. we go. I forgot about him. <laughs> <Is> he, <laughs> <going heavy? laughs> he was also here now, despite the fact that we ditched him before going through the portal, him having no idea of our plans, and the fact we were in a different plane of existence altogether. And he immediately began to offer us a deal where he would help us get back if we sold him our souls. Oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> like that's the last thing you want. I'm not getting this. I'm not selling my soul to a furry. <laughs> Never. Never. Sorry, furries are have already sold their souls. So I know they already have. But I like, fuck. I feel like I should mention that the return rock was five silver, so he was trying to get us to sell our souls for one silver each. Are you serious? Naturally, we declined. So he proceeded to annoy us for the rest of the adventure. Eventually, Jack Puncher pulled out some devil summoning stones, which would summon a devil if thrown into fire. He had obtained these previously in the campaign, and he proceeded to toss these into some magical fire. Because at this point, we were more willing to make a deal with the literal devil than with the DM player character. <laughs> Honestly, I don't blame them at all. That's I, that's, I, I, the, don't the, make the a logic, deal with a furry, the, end of. <laughs> the logic is not flawed, I will say. <laughs> 
So immediately a devil is summoned, and they are described as being of rather high rank, cool, collected and powerful looking, but they immediately break down and freak out, begging us to hurry up and make a deal, or the DM player character will unleash his wrath upon him. It's at this point that we learn that the DM player character was not only a badass, cool, cursed, and not at all edgy Noel, (laughs) he was also immortal. Effectively a demigod. Gay! (laughs) And he has personally and single-handedly consumed the souls of millions of people who he also personally killed. But wait, why would you sell your souls to him then? For silver? Oh, fuck no. I don't know, this is flawed. I know. We'll we'll just roll with it, He was so powerful, he was feared in all nine levels of hell, in the abyss, and that the devil simply refused to deal with him for fear that he might consume them all. So after some quick back and forth, we get a portal stone and we leave. Very epic dungeon, 8 out of 10. Would fight some (laughs) skeletons again. (laughs) Then we return to the city, having completed the first step of our quest, and that was where the session ended. Next up, we went into another teleporter, which brought us to another cave. Surprisingly, this one did not in fact have skeletons. Instead, it had a large ice dragon. Blue eyes, white dragon. Fuck. Who would not let us pass, because she was worried for the safety of her child. Despite being aware of the super death spirit, which had the full intent to kill her and her child, right behind her, within viewing distance, just down a hallway behind her, but that she couldn't reach because the doorway being slightly too narrow. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, I love it. I I feel like I want to ask more questions. The entire way thing is for why though. I feel like you know like that child, like you know when you're like three. Why? 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 That's what I feel like. I feel like a who can jigbox yeah. just asking why, but yeah. then again, I suppose why isn't the correct question, is it? It's why? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, let's just keep going with this, will we? Eventually we convinced her to let us pass and deal with the spirit. Which we did. Quite easily. Again, throwing another evil spirit capture rock. Pokemon? <laughs> Our way back ended up being much more dramatic than the adventure itself, as our teleport was hijacked by the DM player character. Of course. It is Pokemon this Team Rocket coming yeah. in, stealing like a fucking hot air balloon from them. Because he is the power of plot at his side, <laughs> and questioning him is useless, unless he's being put to death by a local city guard, in which case he can apparently do nothing. He immediately demanded that we hand over the evil spirit we had just captured because he was too lazy to go and kill and eat local orphanage. And eat what? What? (laughs) Because he was too lazy to go kill and eat a local orphanage or something. (laughs) Okay. So we give him the evil spirit and leave. Just like that. It's also at this point that we notice that we have been followed by the infant ice dragon who would become a favourite NPC among the party. We named him Aw, oh, we named him Borble. Oh, that's <laughs> oh. nice. The DM then mentioned how the mother would be furious at this and hunt us down. She was never seen again for the rest of the campaign. Now stay tuned for the next part. I promise it will be a massive one. Ooh, bitch, looking oh, forward. Oh, note, I would just like to thank James and Megan from Nicky Birdie. Yeah. <laughs> from the bottom of my heart for reading my previous stories. Oh, that's so cute. That's nice, that's nice. Right, on to the next on part. On to the next part. We start this part of our story with the party relaxing and unwinding in a tavern. When we are approached by the captain of the guard who informs us that we are going to be deployed into one of three war zones. Apparently we had been drafted into the military because someone assigned our names <laughs> into the signing board in the middle not, of the city. Definitely, definitely not the DM bear character that <laughs> signs you up for that. Which we didn't even know existed. Who? Why? We will never know. So this presented us with three options. We choose to go kill an evil ancient jungle dragon, which had apparently destroyed 90% of the horny cat people's combat airships immediately after they came across it. I completely forgot about the horny cat people. (laughs) I know. How did I forget about that? (laughs) We didn't have time to prepare a plan. We were immediately sent off to a supply depot a few miles away from the main military camp. Thus began the legendary show-off between Skeleton Man and Jack Puncher over who could run the fastest. Dice were rolled, and while Skeleton Man was spinning off at the speed of sound due to less wind resistance, Jack Puncher couldn't keep up with his little dwarf legs. I feel him so much. 
This supply line back and forth lasted about three hours, which if you remember is about twice the time it took us to cross literal hell. After three real life hours of moving crates back and forth, oh my God, three hours, Jesus. moving crates back and forth, we were tasked with infiltrating an enemy camp because this evil jungle dragon apparently had prisoner camps staffed by vine zombies for some reasons. God knows. God knows. <laughs> like, it's a thing. Jungle. Eh, makes sense, okay. I suppose. So we go in and engage in a very easy combat where we kill a bunch of plant zombies. It was at this point that the DM got increasingly angry that the fireball spell was incredibly effective against a horde of enemies vulnerable to fire damage and proceeded to go on a 20 minute rant about how he hated the spell and wished that no one used it. And so he proceeded to nerf it in an inconsequential manner that had nothing to do with what he ranted about. And then we finished up the combat. Among the prisoners, we rescued a bunch of horny cat people, including the big mean general of the army, and two gnolls who will go by the names of Ted and Larry, two grown gnoll men who decided to follow Feather after she gave each one a good berry, and they just wanted more food. So it became a running gag that Ted and Larry always ate all of our rations, so we never had any. Keep in mind that neither one of them had any negatives in intelligence or wisdom. So there were these two fully grown average intelligence adult males following a small elven child, and that was the end of that session. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like, you know, I could say something there, but like, it kind of just... It's it kinda, so good. I don't know. In the next session, we were again presented with three options on how to move forward. One of the options was to investigate a strange golden temple in the middle of the jungle. Upon arrival, we find the DM player character throwing fireballs at the gates of the temple for some reason. Because even here, in the middle of a cursed jungle, surrounded by the <laughs> horny cat military <laughs> and full of plant zombies, we cannot escape him. After unsuccessfully forcing the gates open, the DM player character leaps into a tree and all cool and edgy-like watches us from afar. And then we entered the temple, after Jack Puncher simply punched the gates open. Nice. <laughs> nice. Once inside the temple, we discover that it's actually a temple to the god of magic, who was also here. What? No, wait. Was, he what? Just, was he just sitting there in the corner in the temple? In this random temple, in the middle of a jungle, in person, for some reason, the first puzzle was quite simply a classic pressure plate trap, which, after activated by Jack Puncher, shot arrows through the walls of the party. Luckily, we managed to pass unscathed. After that, one of the most absurd of all puzzles I have ever seen started. This one had a giant rock in one corner of the room and a pull of some sort in the other, and also a briefly described triangle Drawn on the floor, we were somewhat relieved, yet to realise what was to come. My first instinct was to try and carry the rock over to the pool, but there were two issues. One, the rock was chained to a hole beneath it, and two, after a short while of pulling it, the rock would retract to the same spot, damaging everyone in the way. What happened then was two excruciating hours of the party fruitlessly trying to solve the puzzle. Remember that triangle? There was just a triangle drawn on the floor. So the elf, after the two hours of trying literally anything else, who I would like to remind you is a small child, went up to the triangle and used Pythagoras' theorem on it, which worked. It turned out the solution was to find out the perimeter of the triangle and then write it into the roll 20 chat. Oh my god. Oh my god. That sounds like just... It had nothing to do with the rock, the chain, or the pool of water, or anything else in the room at all. It was just find the perimeter of the triangle on the floor. Honestly, I still couldn't do that. No. I didn't I, pass my see, this, this, see, this is why <laughs> players should not be given puzzles, right? <laughs> I hate to admit this, but when it comes to like DMs said, yeah, all player characters are just thick as shit. Yeah. You'll never come across that Twitter when it comes to giving them puzzles. Though. Yeah. It is true. It's just a thing. Yeah. And then we proceeded to go into the next room, which had a magical mirror in the middle. The mirror would show your true self or your greatest deepest desires. It was kind of random but not really consistent and what it showed you ended up not mattering at all for the actual puzzle. After a small while, Jack Puncher decided to try and punch the mirror. After a natural 20, 
He was immediately allowed to just skip the dungeon and get to the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also it sounds like the DM was just giving yeah. up at this point. It's like, oh, can we yeah. fucked. He spent the rest of the dungeon literally eating popcorn with the god of magic while watching us through magical cameras like this was Big Brother or something. <laughs> the solution for this puzzle was to just wait like 10 minutes for the DM player character to come in and blow the mirror up, which opened the door to the next room. Oh, my God. Oh I don't my know. god. That's, that's, honestly, this sounds like a fucking mess. I don't know. I couldn't spend my time doing this. Oh my See, god. after the first session, I just would have been like, no, I'm mean, sorry, I'm really busy. I can't make it. Yeah. I've got something on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the next and final puzzle was to fill the cylinder with a specific amount of something after calculating the volume of it. There was nothing outrageous or crazy about it. It was just boring and uninteresting. Was this Jungle Lump? <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I don't know if there was like an American version. There was an American was version it? of Jungle Run, but I can't. It might have been called Jungle Run. I don't know. Uh, it was like a kids show. It was a oh, it was a great yeah. kids show. I loved it. So the Jungle and they got was, little monkey statues. Yeah, Jungle yeah. Run was based. On yeah, it was based on Red Pill as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were teleported out of the temple after a pointless conversation with the literal god of magic, who was named Loki and was another LMAO random trickster god who was in fact a super powerful human because gods don't exist in this universe and only really powerful beings pretended to be gods for some reason. So the DM player character is in fact a god then? Yeah. We're well, he said a de- well he said a demigod. Yeah. Fuck it. So we got out of the temple, did some pointless side quests, met a nature goddess who was a bee lady just chilling in the middle of this cursed zombie jungle, I guess. She only let us go because she liked the ranger. Since the DM knew that her character was a ranger and literally nothing else. <laughs> and so just assumed that she was automatically very naturey. The goddess also gave us some magical honey, which could just cure all diseases and heal fully back to max HP instantaneously if you drink a drop of it. She gives us like six jars of it because that's balanced. Yeah, well, I suppose it's nice. Mm. I'll take the health potions, <laughs> yeah. alright? When you're given health potions, just take the health potions. Yeah. So never question it. Yeah, but they don't seem to need it. All the fucking. Skeletons and wolves. All the like bosses and whatever they're fucking eating, Hitler, like. They must Shame. have like 10 HP or something yeah. on them. Afterwards, the DM player character approached us and said that he knew a ritual to summon the god of magic so he could help us even though we literally knew where he lived. <laughs> and, and it was a 20-minute walk. But ritual time, I guess. After the DM described how he did some cool magic stuff for the ritual, like using his magical fire gloves to turn sand into glass, we met with Loki once again. He then teleported us into his special magic dimension where only he could use magic. He agreed to help us if we did one thing. If we beat him in a children's card game... <sighs> And if we bet something of value to each of us, the bets that were agreed upon were a bit extreme. He wanted Jack Puncher's strength, Skeleton Man's magic, my ability to wear clothes. <laughs> Your ability to wear clothes? Okay. Mate, I don't oh. like where this is going. And he wanted Feather's virginity. Oh my. What? So is this a ding, ding, ding part? We've hit the bingo. Ding, ding, ding. ding. Yeah. Sexual misconduct yeah. in a D&D horror story. We've Once again... <laughs> Once again, a reminder, small child. Now, at this point, we probably should have left the campaign. For reasons unknown to this day, we did not. And then we played a children's card game. Granted, this is probably the only session we all actually enjoyed. The card game itself was pretty fun. It was basically Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, it's not bad. I like Yu-Gi-Oh. As you could basically scream out whatever would make sense for that card to do with no actual rules. After beating Loki in his game... He gave each of us a boon. For the ranger, this was a legendary magic item at level 7. For the wizard, it was being able to see all magic. He effectively had the detect magic spell on at all times. For the barbarian, he got more strength than a greater strength cap, even though he already had 20 strength at this point. And then came my boon, which was a black chicken which he described as a black cock. Oh my god. Because he thought he was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me this after I said the word chicken in a previous out of character conversation a few minutes before. And the DM player character, who was also here for some reason, asked to have his sanity back because he totally isn't edgy. Come on, guys, please. 
And then the god of magic opened a portal into the forest dragon's dream. What? Who was in fact a spirit from my backstory that was possessing the entire jungle at once, for some reason. Now for this fight, we were in our spirit forms or whatever. All that this really meant was that you couldn't use magic items because they didn't have a soul. Unlike all of our other non-magical equipment, apparently. So I started a boss fight with a large, imposing dragon creature. This is probably the closest we got to an actual difficult fight in the entire campaign. Now before the fight actually started, the evil dragon tried to bribe us to his side. Classic, I will give you your heart's desire spiel. And then got cut off by the DM player character saying, He's trying to bribe us, that means he's scared. (laughs) And then promptly initiate combat before we could do or say anything. Now in the start of this combat, the dragon hard focused the DM player character, dealing well over 100 damage in the first few rounds of combat. The only effect this had on the DM player character is that he willed his magic items into existence. Okay, <sighs> somehow. Such as his magical great sword, which did like 2d10 unresistible soul fire damage, which also did another 2d10 unresistable soul fire damage at the end of each of their turns after they were hit by it once. After regaining his magical items, The DM player character flied up to the dragon, proceeding to get the last hit and kill the dragon as it was trying to fly away. I don't know where to. Considering how we were within its own soul. (laughs) The DM then informed us how it was such a shame that none of us got the last hit on it. Because we would have gotten a really cool ability. But it went to the DM player character. Ah well, better luck next time. (laughs) Fuck me. After defeating the dragon... A door just kind of appeared and then we left the spirit realm. It was around this moment that the DM mentioned that he had nerfed the dragon midway through the flight because he realised we might actually lose. Which managed to completely undercut all the positive feelings we had over the first actually difficult fight in the campaign, leaving only regret and disappointment. (laughs) It was at this point that we appeared back at the military camp. Because apparently while we were fighting in its spiritual realm, It was attacking the military camp in the real world, as a vine dragon, and we were hailed as heroes who defeated this great threat which had caused massive casualties and destroyed unknown numbers of massive airships. And so we received our reward, 500 gold, (laughs) for fuck's sake, which we had to share between each other. We were then informed that this was a commander's monthly salary in the military, Because apparently killing ancient dragons in the process of wiping out their entire military is something a commander is expected to do by the month. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Then we had a grand celebration for our victory over the dragon, during which the DM had my character get drunk and run around the camp naked. Before running into the general lady's tent, he then had me roll for charisma to see if she wanted to sleep with me. Of course, none of this had any input from me, as I was basically sitting there not saying anything as the DM was describing to me all the random weird shit they were having my character do. Okay. And then after the celebration, the next morning we were informed of our new mission. We were not allowed back into the hub world anymore, because apparently whoever drafted us into the military had also signed away any rights we might have had. (laughs) And thus concludes today's story. Sorry that this took long, but as you can see, it's a bit long. Hopefully we will have the next part out a bit quicker. Thank you all for your support. Have a nice day. Oh, oh that's nice. Well, I have to say, this whole campaign is a fucking mess. But it's a good mess. Yeah, that's true. To be honest with you. It really is. Yeah. But, uh, no, I'm happy for this story. Like, you know, I think it's... I want more. I, I really want, more. want more. I know, I want more of it. So, like, we're up to speed with what the author has written. So, I'm going to keep notes, keep tabs. You know, anytime there's, a, like, you know, there's two parts out, I'm going to combine that, make it into a video, get it up to you guys. Um, links down below if you want to follow the author yourself, of course. Also, you know. links down below for models. Oh, yeah, models. Check out the models. we got some really cool models. Really nice looking fucking yeah. models. Um, I've sent some models off to Garbo to review. And uh, it should be getting to him soon, so you have a nice video on how 
good the models are and how well they look. And Honestly, they do look really nice. Yeah. I must say, I don't like talking about myself because it feels but like, you know... they are really fucking they, they, sweet. They, like, are, they are good quality and I really like them. Yeah. You know, and it's one of those ones, it's kind of hard for me to say because, like, well, of course you're going to fucking say them. Yeah. You're a fucking model. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, like, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this story. I really enjoyed it and we're going to try and keep up to speed with it as much as we can. Yeah. You know? And, uh... Look, we've got some other things in the works, but I don't want to really talk to you about guys about that stuff yet. But look, we'll get there, right? And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye!